on Facebook now, sis. All right, so we're live now. I would like to begin this 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 discussion by um, giving all praises to the ancestors. You know, I ask right now that the ancestors grant us the knowledge and wisdom of Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, the warrior spirit of Harriet Tubman, and the divine spirit of Mayad Ashe. Ashe. And I would like to salute um, the sisters on the panel. So we have today, we have Sister Riziki L. She's on the panel. We have Sister, the great mother, uh, Sister Kaba is on the panel. And then we also have the great mother, Sister Jamila on, on the panel. So I would like to salute everyone on the panel. Um, for those who don't know who I am, I'm Sister Dada Oya Mayat. But um, if the panel could go ahead and, and speak to the people and just say what's up. We got 13 viewers on so far, but speak to the panel. and I mean, not to the panel, but to the viewers. If you'd like to say something to the viewers in, in the opening. Uh, peace, fam. I guess I'll start first. It's uh, Sister Jamila from the Asase Academy, African-centered uh, educator the here in... Say it again, sis. The camera was off. It went off, Sister Jamila. Again, it was, it was perfect, and then it went off. So we see your icon, like we see your icon or a silhouette, but we don't see you. Yeah. And we, we okay. got to have your face. There you go. There you go. Don't, don't, I'm back. Okay. don't touch anything, Sister Jamila. <laughs> <laughs> Not touch one button, okay? Yeah. Go, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Introduce yourself to the viewers. Okay, peace fam, Sister Jamila of Asase Academy, uh, founder, African-centered educator, director, tutor, um, whatever you want to call it, I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee, by way of Chicago, Illinois. I've been in Memphis for about three months, fam, offering African-centered education to our children because they are going to be the one to get us out of the situation that we have uh, comfortably settled ourselves into. Peace Ashe. fam. Ashe. Sister Kaba. Yeah, peace and love, family. This is Sister Kaba Nepti Ankh. Um, I pretty much do a whole bunch of everything, but um, we're really focused on uh, educating the children because uh, in our children, we see our future. Uh, and so as long as we are trying to plant that seed for them to show them how to sow that seed and how to, to grow to be productive in this society that we live in, because we, we're faced with a lot of different variables uh, that are set there to to keep us conditioned in one way over another. And the first way we're conditioned is that there's no self-identity. We don't know who we are. So uh, we're here to kind of educate our, the people as well as our, our children because with them, we see our future. And I, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. So um, I just want to say black power to everybody. This is very powerful uh, to be engaged with sisters who each in their own right have within them the might, the power, and the skill to lift up a nation. That is what we're doing. We, we're, we're trying to nation build here. Come on. You know, and so if, we, if we're not trying to nation build here, what, you know, what are we really doing? So it's important to know uh, if, if, if black people are really ready for black power. We're going to find right. that out, though. We're yeah, going to so find peace out. and love. That's right. That's right. Sister Riziki. All right. Well, peace and love, family. Um, okay, let me turn it this way. Uh, many of you know... Yeah, okay. I'm Sister Riziki Zafira, and um, my contribution to uplifting, you know, our people, our culture is putting them back in contact with who we really are, right? So a part of my gift is I, I read star charts, um, getting people in alignment with their cosmic self, but more importantly, I also farm. I grow food, and that's one of the main things that we need to um, get back is agriculture there is no culture without agriculture all civilizations are based around agriculture and it's just too much damn control for other people to control our food supply and we not controlling our own food supply uh we all know a lot of the stuff that they're putting in the food is throwing us off chemically emotionally you know mentally and spiritually so the moment we're able to again control our own food source and our food supply and distribute it and distribute them out to our children, our community, our families, you know, that's definitely a main way we can gain back our power. So again, I am Raziki Zafira. Peace and love. Peace. All right. Peace and love family. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Oya Mayat. 
I am the co-founder of Ed Anime Productions. Ed Anime yeah. Productions is an edutainment company that produces educational videos and uh, educational materials, coloring books, storybooks, curriculum, um, targeting African-American children. Um, just to reiterate what Sister Jamila and Sister Kaba said, you know, our children right now behave in, in, in such a way because they don't have, they, they, they lack self-identity. They lack knowledge of self. They don't know their culture. They don't understand their accomplishments and contributions of the ancestors. And so um, my company, my family's company, was designed to give children just that, to teach them who they are, to teach them about their ancestors in hopes of uh, building them, building character, and, and building self-esteem. And then once you have a group of children who are, who are uh, confident in their abilities, then you have these children, you can send these children out into the world to build a nation. But they have to be confident and they have to be of good character first before we give them, before we inundate them or we'll try to teach them skills. So Ed Anime Productions was designed to do just that, to give our children knowledge of self. Um, I agree with the sisters wholeheartedly that we have to reach the babies because they are our future. A lot of us keep saying the children are our future, the children are our future, but how many of us are really investing in our children? And so we're going to get into right. We're going to definitely get into to that today. So today's topic is are black people ready for black power? I mean, and, and this conversation was motivated, well, this, this question was motivated by a conversation that I had earlier um, with the sister, Sister Jamila. We were on the phone and we were building. She was telling me about her um, homeschool, her homeschooling um, African-centered education curriculum. And I was talking to her about Ed Anime Productions. And we were, you know, as sister to sister, just venting and expressing our frustrations with the lack of support that these programs are getting. So then the question was, you know, we, we brought up the question, well, are black people really ready for black power? Are they really ready for revolution? So this, this, this discourse today was motivated by that conversation that I had with um, Sister Jamila. So when we talk about power, let's define what power is because we scream black power. A lot of us are rocking red, black, and green. We put on our onks, our dash. Yeah, herbal tea, all that. Yeah, we throw our fists in the air and we scream black power. But what does it mean to have black power? So let's define, before we even get started, I would like for us to define what black power is. So power, according to, I looked, I think dictionary.com or, or Merriam-Webster, one of those websites, it said that power is um, the capacity, the capacity or ability to be able to do something or influence something. So that's what power is. So when you're looking at power and you define power, it is the ability to do something or the ability to influence something. So when we talk about black power, we're simply saying, okay, you as black people, as a people, have control over the political, social, and economic aspects of your community. So that's what that means to have black power. So if you want to be empowered, then you have to, you have to control the economics the, 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 the politics and, and the social aspects of your community. Now, we already know that we don't control the, the politics, economics, and social aspects of our community. And so then we talk about these issues and we ask for solutions, but there are brothers and sisters with boots on the ground to provide us with solutions so that we will be able to gain control of our communities, but we don't support we simply don't support these brothers and sisters. So now, uh, Raziki, I would like for you to um, go in on what you were talking about earlier when you said that you posed a question to your audience and they told you that they're scared. Yeah. So, yeah, so Sister Jamila, you and I were kind of questioning it like, well, why won't black people support? Well, Sister Raziki right. had this same conversation with brothers and sisters um, in Georgia, and they told her that they're simply scared. Now, Sister Raziki, could you elaborate on that for a quick, for a sec? Absolutely. Okay, so, well, to clarify, the, the, the feed that I gave, it was just people from all over. And um, that particular night, I, I did an astrology class to, you know, get people in tune with one of the many ancient sciences that our ancestors used. And it was funny because in the same building across the hall, and I didn't mention this to you, uh, Dr. Oyama, my, my but it was the NEA, New Era Atlanta. And so, again, you do have groups organizing, but it's like, where, you know what I'm saying? Where's the action? Where's the action? 
And so after class, I was just so lit. I was so excited. You know, people, they want to get in tune with themselves. They want to know their purpose. They want to know this, that, and third. But I'm like, okay, so knowing that we have all these strengths and talents, we have technicians, engineers, mathematicians, astrologers, agriculturalists, teachers, doctors, whatever, but yet we're not coming together like as a nation, we're not owning anything, we're not building anything, so what is the problem? And so I just pose a question, I'm like, listen, you know, even going down to our mystery schools, like we need more of these kinds of uh, educational institutions back. So what's the problem? How come we're not supporting these? How come when we all see a piece of land that's up for grabs, we scared to put down our money? And so it it, it kind of like hurt me a little bit because some people were like, listen, I'm not going front. I've been burned too many damn times. You know what I'm saying? I've done business with black people. They not honest. They want to get over. They want to hook up all this other shit. Stuff, excuse me. And like, uh, uh, you know, that bothers me. Another thing is that uh, it is very much ancestral. One sister was like, listen, or a couple of them was like, listen, well, you know, every time we, we come up on something, we get killed. They bomb us. They want to arrest us. They want to harass us. And, um, you know, make us feel like anytime we try to progress or do something, they're just going to come in and shut it down. And that's one of the main reasons I did not want to go see Birth of a Nation. I ended up going anyway, but it, it was the fact that, again, yeah, so we see this movie of oppression and then all of a sudden we rebel. But at the end of the story, he got hanged and, you know, the oppressor won any damn way. So what are we subconsciously putting in our minds? Like when we watch and see this stuff, we're not seeing black people coming together, organizing and building businesses and it's actually being sustained. What happens is, is we come up, we build up and then these forces come in and shut it down. So a lot of people are like, well, okay, well, what, what's the point of us doing this when all they're going to do is come in and shut it down anyway? So, so there's a lot of fear that is still haunting us not just from today, what we see on today, but ancestrally. Fear is seriously in our DNA, in many of our DNA. And I say, say, so fear, you say that fear is is one of the reasons why you feel like black people don't support each other. You also say that there is a a trust issue. Yes, yes. Black people feel like, well, look, I've been burnt by, you know, my own brother or my own sister. So I see two dynamics here, trust and fear. Yes. Um, uh, sister, Sister Jamila, would you like to add to that, or Sister Kaba? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Um, I would say that along with that, um, people are conditioned to feel that way. They're conditioned to think that they're gonna fail. They're conditioned to feel as if they are inferior to anyone else and everyone else. So they're conditioned to feel that they can't do any better because they don't see the stores. Uh, for the black people. They don't see the businesses. They don't see the schools. Uh, everything is uh, caught up into a white supremacist uh, paradigm. So this is where they go. They go to the stores to purchase their food. They, they go to the, the white bookstores to purchase their books. Hmm. They go to um, the white the gas stations to get their gas. I mean, they feel like it doesn't matter. I, I'm not going to be able to dodge it anyway. I'm still going to have to go to him. So they're conditioned to feel like we can't do any better because this is where we are. And then to top that off, they're conditioned to not think, you know, that we even have a history. I mean, we got to look right. at that. You know, we, we're dealing with a people who don't even know that they had a history prior to the uh, slavery in, Amer- in America. Mm-hmm. So that, that would be my take on it more so than anything because uh, our people – or, or definitely destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We understand that well right now today because our people definitely are turned off by education because education taught them that they were nothing, that they were inferior and that nothing in the world had anything to do with them. So I can see why children would be discouraged with going to school. I can see why people would be discouraged um, with, with doing anything in regard to uh, a black establishment because there are none and there has there haven't there, there has been a whole bunch i mean we but we know one's teaching them about what happened with black wall street in Tulsa, oklahoma you know you haven't taught them the history of what blacks actually black people actually did in america uh to overthrow those yokes of slavery 
you know, but yet and still those things are far and few between as far as when it comes down to uh, helping our people to see that we do have a history. They don't believe that there is one. I mean, it is a sad day when a person will tell you, oh, well, we came from slavery anyway, so we're doing much better than slavery. And this is where they are. This is where they are. So you know, with that, I'll, I'll yield on that. But that's what that's my thinking on that, Sister Doctor. My conditioning. Okay, so can, so I hear I hear fear. I hear uh, a breach of trust, a lack of trust. And I'm gonna say confidence too. I'm gonna say confidence because along with with the um, systematic like brainwashing, it, it you know a lot of people will just feel like like not confident in being successful. You know, I, I think it is all of those things, but it's like, too, again, it goes back to, well, kind of the premise of fear, but yes, we've had many great civilizations prior to slavery. Mm -hmm. um, and there are not as much, uh, well, you know, I can't say that. I, I'll say on the mainstream, because see, a lot of that stuff is hidden. A lot of the times where it discusses our great reigns you know, it, it's almost like you got to find that in like occult bookstores or it's just not openly out to the public. And if it is, people may not just be aware on how to find it. But it's like, what what kind of spirituality or attitude or insight or knowledge did our ancestors have to walk with that great confidence? Because today, many of us are not walking with that great confidence. So mm -hmm. what is it? So since that goes back to what Sister Kaba was saying, conditioning, yeah, you know, being conditioned, you know, so I hear ignorance, I hear, you know, he was saying that, that we don't support each other because of ignorance, fear, trust, and conditioning. Sister Jamila, could, would you like to add to that, sis? I, I would love to add to that, and I'm so glad that I'm, I'm coming up last with all that was said, because the solution for all of that is African-centered education. You know we it. don't know better because we still put our children in the same system that failed us. Yeah. Our children don't know better because the parents have options, but we think we can't afford to send our children to African center schools. You can't afford not to send your children because the same head start that you wish you would have had, your children can now have that, but then you don't take advantage of that, those situations. We talk about conditioning. Our conditioning comes from, again, the public school system that yes. was taught, was, was, um, even here for the purpose of maintaining this conditioning and this fear and these ideologies that we're not good enough, we didn't have a history prior to European colonization. And so all those things get perpetuated. So we cannot keep talking about what the problems are because we now have solutions, but we don't take advantage of the solutions. And so to me, all of these things, all of these issues, all of these things that seem to be problematic can all be eradicated by African-centered education, mm -hmm. teaching our children ourselves in the beginning before we allow them to be fearful, miseducated, you know, mistaught. But then again, um, so then my thing is we can eliminate all these problems, all these excuses, but we're not ready. So are black people ready for black power? I, I would have to say absolutely not, Dr. Oyamad, because if you know there's an African-centered institution within your uh, reach and you don't support it because, see, that's the condition as well. In our mind, we think education is supposed to be free. Some of us Some have of a problem with the idea, the idea of paying for it. Education. Everybody learns it. Always been quote unquote free. But you don't pay for it with your dollars, but you pay for it with your child's mind. So you see, it's not free education. Nothing is free. And we should know that by now. There's no free lunch. There's no free education. Nothing is free. So then we find ourselves playing catch up with these ideas. What do we need to do? We need to take advantage of the things and the resources that are available so we can stop saying that. But I think truthfully, we have become comfortable with our situation and yes. yeah, that fear, fear of doing something different, but I think it's more so holding ourselves accountable. We don't want to hold ourselves accountable. It's easier to blame somebody else for our situation than to step up and correct it ourselves. That's correct. That's correct, Queen. Uh, and okay. I wanted to add, Sister Dr. Maad, to that, you know, something um, that was very important as far as with education because as we look at, I, I, I had a book called Education in the United States, um, uh, written by Albert Church. 
And what he, something he said in there was very important. It was in chapter 11. He said, um, in the title being Progressivism and the Kindergarten, 1870 through 1925, he says, the kindergarten was born out of the educational idealism so eagerly imported from Europe in the 19th century by American educators and out of the intense American interest in using tooling to moralize and to assimilate the urban poor. Wow. I mean, planned. This is, I mean, it's, you know, it was planned a long time ago to yeah. indoctrinate our children. So I, I agree with my sister Jamila 100% on that. But go ahead, Sister Dr. Mahat. I just want to add that. No, that, that was powerful. I'm, I'm glad that you, that you did add that, um, Sister Kaba. So I wanted to, us to break down each of the aspects of our community, okay? So the, oh man, Sister Jamila, your camera went out again. Sis, Sister Jamila, I had muted uh -huh. her. I, I muted her mic because uh, it, I heard the wind and stuff in the background while Sister Kaba was um, talking. Yeah, Kaba was speaking, and um, you know, so that we could hear her. Sister, Sister Jamila, unmute your mic, please, sis. I was trying to wait until you guys settled so that Sister Kaba could be heard while she was, uh, you know, conveying her thoughts. Sister Jamila. Trying to get her, trying to, I, trying to get her to unmute her mic. Sister Jamila. Okay. Well, I think she's still on, but her mic is muted, and yeah, um, yeah her mic is muted um, because I definitely she's want to. I think she's driving too, Sister Doctor Mild. I believe, huh? I think she was driving. Was she driving, sis? Uh, I think she was, and then she got out of the car, and okay. then yeah. But anyway, okay. we're going to. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and continue. Um, so I want to break down these different aspects of our community. So I said that, okay, power means the ability or the capacity to do something or influence. Something. So I was saying for black people to have black power, that we need to be in charge or in control of the social, political, and economic aspects, economic aspects of our community. Okay, so let's go in with the economics. I want to start with, with speaking about that. So Sister Jamila, I see you, sis. Can you unmute your mic? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to start with the economics. Economics piece, because that piece is very, very, very important. So we talk about black businesses. And on Facebook and social media, I see a lot of people putting up support black businesses, support black businesses. But um, Sister Jamila and myself were building on this earlier, and we were saying that people believe that support black business simply means sharing or liking a post. Mm -hmm. that, that's a way to help promote black businesses. But what about utilizing your resources, using, using your dollars to support these black businesses? So, you know, for example, um, at FA Productions, we put out a video called Meltrek. Meltrek is being sold around the country. I mean, granted, it is. That we're doing, you know, fairly well. But we're not being, we're not, we're not selling as much as we could if people would actually put up the dollars. So, for example, Sister Kaba, if you look at the posts, um, Meltrek posts, you'll see sometimes we get a thousand likes, sometimes, yeah. you know, two hundred mm -hmm. shares. So we get the shares, we get the likes, we get the, not the money. But we don't thank you. We don't get the dollars. And see what I was explaining to Sister. Uh, Jamila earlier is that we have to support and what I mean by support I'm not simply saying share a post or like a post but use our dollars spend our dollars with these black businesses we have to support the, the producers in our community to enable them to continue to produce so if you don't support them then they won't be able to continue to produce, support, to, to produce um, these goods and provide you with certain services if you're not spending your dollars so supporting black owned businesses is, is not a chant. It's not a hashtag. It's an action. It's a call yeah. to action. Meaning mm -hmm. that you should be supporting these black businesses with your dollars. The Jews do it. And, and can, Go ahead, sis. Go ahead. You know, I was saying too, one, one good thing that I uh, learned from the NEA when they were in their meeting yesterday, they were telling me something about a, a business mob or whatever. You know how there was flash mob where you have 
a group of people just go to the mall and do some kind of stupid dance or whatever. Well, what they do is they'll link up like every Saturday in like a group of 30 and 50 and will just go to a business and buy their products or sit down and eat. You know what I mean? And it takes like something as little as that to just start really making a difference. And I was like, wow, okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm you know, I'm signing up with them because I'm, I want to be a part of that. And I'm like, well, just imagine if, you know, as a nation or whatever, you get together locally with 30 of your people, you know, and y'all go to these businesses every Saturday and start buying from them. Or you support an online business like Meltra. And I know, like I was telling Dr. William, I don't have children, but I purchased Meltra because I actually enjoy it. And if my nephew come over or the neighborhood couldn't come over, you go sit your butt right in front of the TV and watch this Meltra because it's something that's needed. So that's just an idea. So, yeah, we. we so we have well, there's the other thing, too, I think. Oh. No, go sis. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you with Other things, too. No, that's okay because we don't have, like, a little uh, finger or anything like that. Uh, I think the thing that um, that causes some of this lack of support is that um, people, Facebook has made people feel like um, they are supporting by, like you said, sharing posts and tagging people in posts and things like that. But I have requested people who are here in Memphis, don't add me to a Facebook group. I have a whole school. Right. Don't tag me in a post. Come and find me. Our children have done a farmer's market. I said, if you can't make it, send somebody who can. I was telling you earlier today, sis, we are telling our children to own their own businesses. But then the adults don't come and support the efforts. So I, how do we tell our children the goal is to be sovereign, the goal is to be self-sufficient, the goal is to own your own business, and then when I have these events that the children put on, the adults don't come and support them. So are our children going to fail because we make our mouths say what we want to do, but our pockets, our time, our resource sources don't do it? So my fear, am I setting our children up by telling them to own their own businesses when the adults don't come and support our children? Mm. 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 Wow. <clears throat> and when you said that to me earlier, you spoke volumes. Like, you know, I, I, I told my sons, you know, I have them, they're little entrepreneurs right now. And I asked myself the same question, Sister Jamila, like, am I, am I, you know, am I misguiding them by saying, look, start your own business. And then, like you say, you get them to, you know, they, you mold them and train them to be entrepreneurs. And then they don't have the backing and the support of their own people, you know, mm. and, and it's very disheartening. And very discouraging. At one point, my oldest son, Harvey, because of the lack of Meltrex sales, he said, Ma, I'm thinking about getting a job. You know? Oh, hell no. I'm like, he was really considering getting a job. And I just kept telling him, baby, look, it's going to, you know, it's going to pan out. Your hard work, your, your efforts are going to pan out. And he was like, look, Ma, you know, we've been at this for three years. And, and there are over 40 million African-American people, you know, in America and our posts are getting likes and shares. He was like, but where's the money? You know, and these kids like to see things. They like to touch things, you know? And so I, I, I kind of, sh I share your same sentiments, um, Sister Jamila, in that, you know, are we misguiding our children when we tell them to be entrepreneurs and self-sufficient and build businesses when they go out and do it and then don't get the support, you know, from our people, you know? So that's definitely, you know, a question. That's, that's definitely a question. Yeah, it is. It, it is. It's, I'm sorry, Dr. Mark. Go ahead, sis. I didn't know if you wanted no, I was saying it is, it is a problem. It is a problem, and it almost puts you in a position where, you know, as you're teaching your children uh, morals and values in life and how to go ahead and start their own business, you also have to, in turn, teach them how to deal with, uh, how to uh, gain a clientele of just other people around them that will be supportive of them as they grow. You got to develop these working relationships. And, you know, it's so hard to develop these working relationships when we're up against, against so many different uh, doctrines that causes people to disagree here and agree there. And they stay so torn, you know, so she makes a valid point in that, you know, we tell our children to get the businesses and then we're not going to support them. So I guess, you know, the key to that would be to, as we're, as we're trying to become entrepreneurs, building up people around us who are going to be supportive and teaching them in, in the culture, in the t tradition that gives them a rooting and a solid basis where they could bring others in. And they'd be, I mean, I, I, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, 
that is a true statement. You know, we will pass up the black mom and pop store on the corner because her bread is a dollar and 10 cents. And, they, and we'll go to the other one down the street because they're 99 cents. So we won't even give that little 11, 10, 11 cents to, to our own people because they're higher. You know, so that's, that's a, yeah, that's a valid point she made. Yes. So, so let me ask this then. Okay, so because we, we know that and I mean, it's very valid to say, you know, we need to put everything into our children, right? But, you mm -hmm. know, when the children leave these African-centered schools that some of them go to or not, like it's still up to the parents to even right. have kind of influence. So what mm -hmm. like what are some solutions for, for the parents? And I'm getting a lot of comments on on this live feed and, and one sister saying, look, we will not be able to succeed until we realize that we have been put under a spell. And we need to do a lot of releasing of fear so that we can build schools, our own media, economics, you know, so forth and so on. And and I have to say this is a part of what I teach in my class, like you know, just to work on one part, it's like baking a cake, right? You mm -hmm. can't make a cake with just one ingredient. So mm -hmm. education is cool. Economics is cool. But what mm -hmm. about media? What about schools? What about our spirituality? What about our physical self and self-defense? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, and that goes, all of that. that goes to the other aspect of properly socializing our people. So we were going to go down the line and discuss, okay, so the economic aspects. Okay. So that as far as uh, finances, establishing businesses, circulating black dollars, creating jobs for black youth. So all of that would be under black power, right? Because I told you that in order to have black power, that we had to be in control of the social, political, and economic um, aspects of our community. So we just went over the economics. Right. Now you and your following are going into proper socialization. So all of that will fall into properly socializing our people. You get what I'm saying? So now when you talk about properly socializing people, now we're going into the ecology of human development, which would be the different socialization systems. So you had the micro system, which would be the family, right? Then you right. had the exo system, which would be the media, government, organized religions. And then you had the macro system, which would be American culture as a whole. So those are the social the socialization systems. Right. Um, so that's the aspect that you're talking about, defense. Um talking to the parents, mm -hmm. um, proper education. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're talking about right now. But we were definitely going to get into that because you made a good point. You know, what good is having um, an African-centered education if you send that child back home or into an environment that doesn't um, nurture that yeah, education? You, know. you right. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to nurture that and we need to be able to manifest whatever that they're learning in this African-centered um, curriculum. So I agree with you. 100%, and that's why I wish Sister Jamila, I don't know why she dropped out, because I really wanted that sister to elaborate on the importance of having an, ed an African-centered education versus a public school um, education. Like, what are the differences? Because right, people right. talk about African-centered education, but how does it differ from um, the public the school system? Public system? You know? Yeah, and, and a lot of people, I think, too, like, even just talking to some people, like, they get this idea, like, when you say African-centered school, it's just all about Africa, 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 Africa. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, you, you want to learn about it, but understand that we also invented technology. We also invented, you know, agriculture, science, sacred geometry, like, all of that stuff. So when you hear about African-centered education, don't just think we're being, you know, like, so dogmatic like a lot of these other organized religions. It's just literally taking the fact that what we learn in today's public school systems ain't really teaching us much and knowing how our ancestors taught. We was learning math and sciences by the age of nine, like complex stuff, you know? And it's like, we've in a sense been watered down and uh, we got to get back to that. And the last thing I want to say, and I know you're going to get into it later, um, Dr. Oyama, but like one of the things I learned in my grand trying class and even that I'm applying now in my classes is, learning the the qualities and characteristics of certain cultures and 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 characteristics and accomplishments that quote unquote they are accredited to so again it's like you have certain cultures of people and you can see this today one is really known for how religious we can be i mean lord knows we got churches in on every damn corner 
Another culture is known for technology. Another culture is learned is known for being good in business. Another culture is is be is known for you know being well educated in herbs and all that stuff. And so it's like for me and for a lot of people, I'm like, yo, I want us to see us become our own avatars again. And that's mastering all the elements, aka all the knowledge that was given to us in the first place. So it's like, yes, we need all of these things, but now I guess a lot of us just need direction. Like, how do we structure? How do we organize? Like, we know what needs to be done, but like, how do we get get it started? Right. And, and, and sis, I'm glad that you said. I'm glad that you spoke on the fact that when you say African centered education, you right. know, what does that really mean? You know, a lot of people right. think saying, it's all about Africa. It's all about Africa. You know, yeah. when you say African education, we're saying that. The curriculum, um, we're saying that the curriculum will be designed to edify and, and will the target and to edify children of African descent. Because the great Dr. Amos Wilson tells us this. He said that, you know, he said there's no such thing as a universal public school system, right? No, everybody's not going to be successful in this uh, public school system because he said you can't, you know, you can't educate, you know, black children the way you educate European children. He said, because our psychology is different, you know? That's right. So what determines your psychology? Well, your history and how you were socialized. So your history, um, your socialization, and your experiences dictate your psychology. So he was saying that black children and white children have a different psychology. So because we have a different, different psychology, then we have to employ a different tactic to educate our children. So it's like kind of we, we put them in this pipeline and we send them to, you know, pu the public school system and we say educate our babies, but they're educating our babies the way, you know, they're getting educated the same as European children are being educated. And we so and then when they don't meet certain uh, 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 standards, then they're labeled as, uh, oh, they have a learning disability. Or, oh, you know, they're misbehaving. They have ADHD and they, they, they fix all, they affix a lot of labels to our children um, simply because they may not be able to meet a certain standard that was set for Your children across children. the board. Mm -hmm. But what we have to realize is that our children have a different psychology. Therefore, we must educate our children and instruct them differently than we would do, you know, other children, Asians and Europeans right. alike. So, uh, so that's the first thing. So an African-centered education would be an, an, uh, an institution that that develops curriculum to edify children of African descent. So that means teaching styles, teaching techniques, um, disciplinary techniques, all of those would be tailored, uh, tailored for um, children of African descent. Also, the curriculum, we have to understand what a curriculum means, okay? So when you talk about the public school curriculum, what is a curriculum and how is it designed? A curriculum is designed to maintain or advance a society. So the, the curriculum that our children are learning in school is the, a curriculum to maintain and advance the dominant society. They're not trained to create jobs. They're trained, I'm sorry, they're not trained to create the jobs. They're trained to get jobs and they yeah. take the skills to these jobs. So with an African-centered curriculum, now we're talking about nation building. We're giving our children the skills that they need not to get a job, but to create a job. So we're in there teaching them skills, like you say, Sister Raziki, agriculture. So now they know how to feed themselves. They know when to plant, you know, when to harvest. They know how to fish and things of that nature. So they have agriculture, sewing. I remember when my mom, well, I don't remember. My mom told me when she was younger, sewing used to be a class. It's no yeah. a class. A lot of people don't, a lot of our, our, our children don't even know how to make their own Shoes, I mean, our own clothes, you know, That's so sewing, sewing yeah. to be in the curriculum, so mm -hmm. agriculture, carpentry, a lot of our yeah. young boys, a lot of our young boys, they don't know how to fix anything in the house. You know, it was, yeah. it, it was important for me to um, teach my, my sons how the sheet rock. So we didn't put up, uh, we've laid, uh, we've laid, we put up walls together and we were mud and sand and stuff like that. So they know how to fix the shower head and, you know, little things like that. But our little boys need to learn carpentry. We need to learn the math, the sciences, engineering, you know, technology. 
So we had to we had to arm our children with the skills to go out here and build a nation. So the difference between an African centered education and a European education is that with an African centered education, you're given the skills and, and the tools to go build a nation and to be self sufficient. So that's the difference. It's not really about Africa, Africa, Africa. It's just you uh, uplift to uplift. Um, the African community. So that's what the, an African-centered um, education does versus um, the traditional education that we are accustomed to, to giving our children. So, um, but Sister Riziki, I wanted you to elaborate on um, also some, some other socialization uh, aspects of the community. You were saying that we need, you said defense, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's something Absolutely. About, you said something <laughs> about defense, so it should be classes on how to defend yourself. You know, Tai Chi classes, you know, for example, so classes on self-defense and not just for our boys, but also for our girls. So self-defense classes. So these are the sorts of, of things I believe should be in, mm -hmm. a, um, in an African-centered curriculum. Um, Dr. Amos Wilson and Dr. Kwame, I want to say his name is Koto. They said, if you're not talking about nation building, then you're not talking about an African-centered education. Oh, it's right. predicated on nation building. Right. Okay. I was uh, watching a video, and, and like I was saying, part of my classes, I, I share um, accomplishments from, you know, cultures who, like, even though, of course, we, you know, are originators, but, you know, certain cultures are just accredited to certain things. And so one of the things we, you know, was looking at was the air culture. Like, you know, they're inventing technology, but there was, like, these, this army of women who were doing, like, these synchronized knife moves. You know what I mean? Like really learning how to defend themselves. And it's like, you know, when we see what's going on today and they're killing our men left and right. And you can see now a lot of our women, we are coming to the front lines to defend our men and our boys. And so it's like, and even our daughters and ourselves. So it's like, yeah, defense is very, very, very important for us to understand and learn. But it's like, again, going back that, to that condition and when, if a woman is taught how to defend or fight, it's too masculine or whatever, yeah. or, or that's just a man's job or, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's like, no, that's no, that's not how we survived back in the day. Like everybody knew how to fight to protect their family. And so again, even going back to the social, um, economic or social, I, I forgot the word you said, sis, you know, you <laughs> <laughs> using those PhD words. I just got a mask. I can't be doing all that. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, defense, and, again, going back to our knowing, our stuff, knowing our power, and that's one of the main reasons why I got into the science of technology. A lot of us walking around here not knowing our strength, not knowing why we came here, and not knowing the strength of, the, of our spirit that we was born here with. And it's like when you have a civilization of people who are spending more time in life trying to find out what they are and why they're here instead of just knowing and hitting the ground running. This is another why, reason why there's a delay in our development. And so, like I said, it just goes so deep to where everything that we're talking about, it's not like it can just be like, okay, first we'll do this, then that. It's like literally it has to work together, you know, like in, in synchronicity, if you will. And um, check this yeah. out. Check this out, sis. While we look, while we got Sister Jamila back on. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, my my battery died, sis. And my phone won't charge. I'm telling you, look, Dr. Ma, this is what happened. I used to have a good phone with a good uh, contract with a good service provider. But part of my personal sacrifice, I turned that nice phone in. I got this 99 cent phone on this bootleg network, but it's all to fund my dreams. So I got to deal with the stuff that come along with it. So we can't say that we can't make it work. We can't make it happen. We're not willing to get rid of our Galaxy X7s. We don't uh -huh. want to get rid of our iPhone 6s. We can make changes in our financial situation to be able to afford the things that's going to bring about a positive change for our people, but we're not ready to do that. So I am proof that it can be done because I'm doing it. So that's why you missed me. I'm sorry. I'm back. <laughs> no problem. Ayla, Ayla says, do me a favor. Go in on the difference between an African uh, center education and a public school um, education. You know, Absolutely. I was, I was asking a little bit, but I know that you have that, you, you know, you're an expert at that. So go in on that for me, sis. Okay. Well, let me first start with the similarities. All children need to know how to read. They do. So 
the point is for the African Center of Education, everything that they read, everything that they see, everything that they do puts them at the forefront. It lets them know their story from their perspective. So the benefit of African Center Education is that everything they read will be about them. Everything they write about will be about them. So my children are still going to read. My uh, eight-year-olds know how to graph an equation. My nine-year-olds know how to find a percent of a number using mental math. So it's not that the African Center Education, all you're doing is singing Kumbaya and uh, shouting Black Power. Our children work equally, if not harder, than a traditional school system. The public school system is designed to train you how to grow up and be a good employee for white people. African-centered education finds the strength of each individual child. It capitalizes off of that strength, and I gear each of my students towards whatever it is that they present to me that they uh, want to do. Now, actually, I'm at the school now, so it's awesome that you even asked me because I have some graded papers here, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing and, you know, disclose everything, but just like we have vocabulary words when you're in a traditional school, our children here also have vocabulary words, but the mm -hmm. difference see is that our vocabulary words, again, are talking about things that are geared towards who they are and who we are as a people. So when I give my children a writing assignment, they have to write as well. So again, the public schools, and you know what happens in public schools is that they give the Europeans all the credit for everything. And see, the, the sad thing is Western academia has always prided itself in going to Africa and studying. But somehow they go in being nobodies and they come out the father of algebra, the father of medicine. The, how do you go in and nobody and you come out the father? You might be the second removed nephew of a stepson of somebody else, but not the father. So we had some uh, vocabulary words with our own children. Here is one of my students' uh, sentences. It says, um, um, King Tut won many victories. The word was just victory. Um, the word um, spies. Africans were very smart, so they sent some of them on the white side as a spy. That's what Harriet Tubman did. Um, if an African was trying to start a slave revolt, he or she has to pick people to help him or her that they feel safe around. So our children are still doing the same type of work. They're still doing the same work, except for what they know is based upon their own story. One of the words was was, um, was attacked. So here's a sentence. Queen Nziga faked her death and attacked with a bigger army. Children don't know who Queen Nzinga is. I'm sorry, there are some adults who don't know who Queen Nzinga is. Mm -hmm. I have a six-year-old. I'm, I'm telling the truth. I have a six-year-old who goes to the map every day. She knows that Africa is not a country, that it's a continent, and it has 54 countries inside. If one more of our cousins talk about the country Africa, I hate to have to correct that. But I have a six-year-old whose parents have made the ultimate sacrifice to make sure they get this education. So, yeah, she can spell every single word on that board. Knows every single color. She know that means God. You would not see a picture of white Jesus up in that South State Academy. No, you will not. They have symbols of life. They have the Ayah Heru. They have the Ak. They have all these, all these symbols everywhere to remind them of their own greatness. Mm -hmm. Post them when you first walk in. So again, our children know. They know who Malcolm X is, and they know what by any means necessary he is. They know what happens when you welcome the wrong guests to your home. We went through that whole little cycle there. Our children know exactly who Richard Allen is. They know. They know because everywhere around them, there are posted positive images of them, of who they are. When they wake up, they get here, and every morning we say, Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu's pledge to parents, pledge to students. Thank you for coming into this world. Thank you for bringing me into this world. I look to you for love. God. It's just positive affirmations all day long. And so the benefit of African-centered education your child going to still get the same rigor. They're still going to get the same assignments. They're still going to have to read. They're still going to have to write. But they're going to know the true story of history with themselves at the center of it. They're going to even be more advanced because it's a smaller group. I can move them on because I'm not getting paid to stifle them. It's not my goal to slow them down, but actually to accelerate them. So mm -hmm. I can even pull up the public school curriculum and show you that even if your child is in public school, and here's what they say third graders should do, it's not because they feel that that's why a third grader is ready. It's a pacing guide to pace us to make mm -hmm. sure that we don't outgrow their counterparts, that we don't teach them too much, that we don't know too much. But again, we have never had a parallelogram season. 
there's been a tax season, how many adults don't even do their own taxes? Because they have no idea. How many adults say, oh, I hate fractions. There are several adults who don't like math right now because they had a teacher who was not strong in math. Every single child in here has a love for math because I teach math as a mathematician. Imhotep was the first mathematician. Your ancestors were mathematicians. mathematicians. Right. How dare you say you're not good in math and science when that's what your ancestors are priding themselves and having being strong in. So a constant reminder of who they are, a constant reminder of what they can do, a constant reminder of the people who came before them to show them how to do it. So all day, every day, they are being taught, but the subliminal messages that they see are all about self-empowering. So let me ask your question, Sister Jamila. That was beautiful. Would yeah. you would you would you would you agree with Dr. Amos Wilson and Dr. Kwame? I want to say his name is Koto. Dr. Kwame Koto, he wrote a book called um, Nation Building and he provided uh, you know, the, the elements that an African centered curriculum should have. But let me ask you this, would you would you agree with those brothers in that you have to educate uh, black children different than uh, you know other children, like because the psychology is different. So we have to, you know, and your psychology would, you know, your, your psychology is determined by your, your, your history, your experiences, and how you were socialized. So these brothers were saying that you should employ different techniques to uh, educate uh, black children because we don't have the same psychology as other children. So would you? Absolutely. <clears throat> I have a student who wears roller skates to school every day, and he skates around. He skates around. But public school would be calling every day, calling the parent. He must sit down in his chair. I'm not going to sit down all day long. So I understand that he has a need to roller skate, so he wears roller skates to school. Other one wears his little heelys, and he heels around. He goes put his paper in the bin. He heels to put his paper in the bin. He heels to go back there. Another one who loves music. It's in our DNA. Music was not a subject that we taught. Music was incorporated in Africans' daily life. So if you want to sing and clap and dance, sing and clap and dance. Today they were around here talking about oh, Batala, oh, Shanla, oh, Rishanla. I didn't say sit down, shut up, be quiet. Go on and harness that. So but, we were talking about the Orishas. We were talking and getting ready for our Halloween, the, uh, the event that we're putting on in place of Halloween. And so I was just telling them about it and they start chanting and I let them. You don't have to silence children. So of right. course our psychology is different. How you teach them are different. How mm -hmm. you address them is different. What you allow them to do is different. So they sing they honor each other. They honor their ancestors. We have these awesome conversations. So no, I'm not getting uh, a stipend for passing some kind of test or standardized test or anything else. My joy comes from knowing that my ancestors are proud that I'm allowing these children to be these children. Allowing That's them right. to be who they are and not having to assimilate to a social norm so mm -hmm. that they can understand how they're supposed to work in an environment when they get older to work for other people. That's just not going to happen. So right. absolutely, we t I teach them different because they are different and we are different and, and sis i like that you said i spoke on that earlier how when our children do certain things in that school system they're labeled as oh they must have adhd because like you said if that child if that child would have gone into uh, the school system or one of the classes roller skating mm -hmm. would have been calling home she would have a, a disciplinary problem it would have been absolutely the other child that came into your classroom you said she was just singing or he was just singing it would have yeah. been an issue so we had the, you know, we got to understand, you know, when they label our children ADHD or when they say, oh, our children have a learning disability. What does that really mean to say that our children have a learning disability, you know? And I think it's very arrogant to allow, I think it's very arrogant of them to affix labels to our children and very ignorant of us to allow them to. That's but, um, right, right. Yeah, to allow them to. But Sister Kaba, I wanted you to speak on this next aspect of socialization. So we touched on, you know, African-centered education. Um, Sister Raziki talked about how we need to be able to defend ourselves. Um, the black family. Yes. We have to talk about the black family. So we're talking about the, the, the economic status. We talk about social. So now when we're talking about socializing, we have to talk about the black family because we got to remember Prior to these children coming to your classroom, Sister Jamila, they're being socialized at home mm -hmm. by a family, right? Their micro system, their cipher, you know, their inner circle, which would be their family. So, you know, when we talk about our, our black people ready for black power, I mean, you can't have black power without black unity and male-female relations 
are the atoms or the fundamental blocks of black unity. And what I see right now in 2016 is that, not even 2016, ever since uh, the European even came over to Africa, there was a wedge placed between the black man and black woman. And it's even a greater divide now. So let's, I want to get into that with the panel, Sister Raziki, Sister Kaba, Sister Jamila. I want to talk about the black family because we say, well, you know, black people aren't ready for black power. Well, if men and women can't get along, how can <laughs> black power? You know, if I'm arguing with him, he's arguing with me. And it's this bicker back and forth between black men and black women or this loss of mutual respect between black men and black women. How can we ever empower ourselves if we're not together? You know, this, this, we can't be separate and together. You know, that, that's an oxymoron. So let's really get into that. Um, the black family and male female relations and how, you know, we need to come together, you know, to, to fix some of these problems in the community. So could somebody build on that? Absolutely. Yeah, I just, I just feel like, I, this is the car, but I just feel like, you know, the black uh, family structure is, is one that's imminent. We need it in the community. We, we need it to, uh, we need to embrace uh, uh the black man and the black woman as a trinity because between the two we're going to have creation you know we're going to have that child so you know it's just like it takes the two to create that child you know when you sever the ties of that union you know there's going to be a loss there you know and, and and majority of the time the children are the ones who lose out on every single thing um mm -hmm. because they lose so much and you know and it changes their perception on life it, it changes how they view themselves or they start to go through all kind of uh, uh problems with their peers or, or little children around them because they're affected so because that that family that strong family uh presence isn't there that father figure is, is, isn't there or sometimes in a lot of cases it could be the mother figure but we're talking about the mother and the father and how they cannot get along with one another because it's almost as if they hate one another we have a society who have pretty much painted a picture for that black man and that black woman and it's told both of them what it is they should and should not do what it is they should and shouldn't like who's beautiful and who's not beautiful you find brothers telling sisters they're ugly. You have, you find sisters telling brothers they ain't this. You know, um, they hate one another so much because they idolize something completely different that's been put right. there to cause these issues in the first place. The right. black family structure, without the black family structure, you know, we, we cannot continue to build a, a, a nation. Our children, they, they lack, you know, they lack in, in, um, in spirit, you know, their spirits are broken. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the protection isn't there. The mother winds up happening to take on that role uh, as protector, which she already is, but then she's the nurturer, and then she has to be there to teach the lessons and everything because our brothers, they're emasculated, or they are out and they're caught up into the world, worldly things. They're caught up into uh, uh, all of the vile wickedness that keeps them stuck within their lower self. You know, they can't even elevate to a higher frequency to say, hey, the children don't deserve this. I need to give them the life that I, I wish I could have had or mm -hmm. I would love for them to have. We need to keep the family structure together, the black man and the black woman, so that the children can be strong in this situation. I mean, the last thing we want to do is have an army, you know, going out before us where our children, they can't lead the way, you know what I'm saying right now, because we're fragile, we're broken. So it's almost as if we're going to put them out there, you know what I'm saying, uh, to be the ones to take on everything. We haven't trained them. We've shown right. them how it is to be apart from one another. We've shown them how it is to hate one another, how it is to treat one another bad. We haven't shown them how it is to come together and build based off this family structure and keep that going you know, for, for future generations. We haven't shown our children what it is to respect the black man. We haven't shown our children what it is to respect the black woman. Anytime we put a white, a picture of a white Jesus on the wall, we immediately tell our children not to respect their father, but this is your father. Right. So we give them this illusion of something completely different that has nothing to do with their everyday reality. But the two people that are there to everyday reality is that mother and that father and in them they feel to believe i can give only so much but i gotta give it all to him this person this illusion this picture this you know so our people are so destroyed uh, uh against one another we think the white woman is um 
the standard of beauty and the brothers are sitting around telling her, oh, you know, your hair is nappy. Why don't you put a perm in your hair? You know, I, I've heard these stories. I've, I've even experienced some of these things, you know, and it's like, it's not fair that sisters who have went through this diaspora, and we know, you know, it covers so much here in America. It's unfair that a sister would have to come to this point, you know, in this age, and hear a brother tell her she's ugly or she ain't nothing. Or, oh, I'm going to go get me a white woman. So they have completely executed uh, their plan to destroy and break, break up every fiber of the black family unit. And without that, we, we cannot nation build. Mm. Without the family, without the family, we're dead, Sister Kaba. That's right, baby. Without the family, they, you, know, they, you know, you're done. You're dead. You know, so if you can't, men and women can't get along, then that means that men and women aren't getting married. If we aren't getting married, maybe we're having children. Maybe we aren't having children. You understand right. what I'm saying? And then our children aren't being properly socialized because That's the right. black family is destroyed. So if you destroy the black family, you've killed the black race. So like you That's said, right. we can't talk about nation, pit, pit, nation building or black empowerment until we get our homes in order. And right. in order to get our homes in order, we have to heal. And I want Sister Raziki to go in on that. We have to heal ourselves. A lot of us are coming into these relationships and not even just intimate relationships without, without compliment. I don't like calling the black man my opposite. I don't like yeah. calling the black man my counterpart. I like calling the black man my compliment. That's what I like yeah. calling the black man. So, um, He's my yeah, so number one, and, and this is definitely speaking from experience as well, like first off, many of us are walking around here not even valuing what a relationship is. Many of us feel like we don't need them, we don't need this. And I know for me personally, right, being raised in a single parent home, I was taught how to do and survive without a man. So my attitude in a relationship was just always, well, psh, I don't need you because I can do it on my own. And that, mm -hmm. that kind of made me carry myself and how I talk to him in a certain way as if he was not needed. Another yep is a lot of us are walking around with ancestral trauma. There's a lot of us whose family's been, you know, uh, through rape, molestation, incest, so, so forth and so on. And because of this slave mentality that a lot of us are still carrying on, we suppress that pain. Because we're used to being raped and whipped and molested and we wasn't able to stick up for ourselves. We wasn't able to speak or nothing like that. And a lot of us, a lot of that is carried and imprinted in our DNA. And lastly, if we do not understand that a lot of us are walking around with this personality that's not ours. And in our school of the thought, again, it's called counterfeit personality. Who you really are is, 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 is under the surface to where as you have to put on this mask and this facade based on the environment that you're in. So then when you get into a relationship, you date and you got this representative. You're not even dating the real person that <laughs> you dating the damn representative. And then the last thing is that, okay, so knowing that we are spiritual beings, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, we get into religion and ritual and all this other stuff. And that's why my motto is black people need Tantra. T and when people hear Tantra, they think it's all about sex. No, it's yeah. about healing a lot of the trauma that your spirit has been uh, consumed with. Like people are still walking around with trauma in a aura, trauma in a energy, trauma in a spirit. And we're not taught anymore how to properly heal that and get over that. And so then when you understand, as for me as a woman, the person who's supposed to heal me is my man. As a man, the person that's supposed to heal you is your woman. And if we don't carry ourselves to that high regard or if we don't feel like we are obligated to each other or responsible to each other to heal each other, it's always going to be a problem. The black woman and the black man cannot do it by themselves alone. We have to come together. And it's important for us. And when I use this word role, it doesn't mean the role that society make. It's like, listen, I know your strength. You know my strength. Now we, we got to put it together and make it pop. You know? But it definitely comes with healing, with, with clearing a lot of blockage, a lot of fear, a lot of distrust that we have with each other. You know, a lot of brothers walking around with this mentality, these hoes ain't loyal. You know, uh, women walking around with this mentality, well, you know, uh, get the Becky with the white hair, and I'm just good hair or whatever. And it's just like, come on, we, we got to get out of that train of thought and really wake up and see what's going on. We need each other. And for us to be good to each other, we got to be healed. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Hold up, hey, hey, Sister Raziki, I just wanted to address one of the, I don't know if this is, if this is a, a male or a female in the chat room. Um, the name is Tar Nonet. And I'm going to read the comment that Tar Nonet said, because I don't want to, I want to make sure that I quote him or her. The, the, the profile picture is a female, but right. I'm not sure if it's a male or a female, but it's Tar Nunet Nabupa Nupu. Um, this, this individual stated that the black family needs the household in order first with the man as the head and the woman knowing her place. What? I have, okay, now let me, let me, let me, let me touch on that real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, sister. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Look at Rasik. Okay, right. right. But I just wanted to point that that's that you know we gotta be able to identify. A, a few weeks ago, I did a video called um, entitled "Do You Have an African Worldview or Do You Have a European Worldview?" And that is of a European mentality. Because in Africa, we believe that harmonious dualism, my yacht, compliments. So there was no head or no tail because the black man understood, the black African man understood that the male and female were two entities of one, I'm sorry, two manifestations of one entity. So we're talking about compliments. We're talking about balance. We're talking about my yacht. When you tell people things like I'm the head or I'm the tail, you're not you're not preaching my yacht. You're not preaching, that's and, and that's what that's what really grinds my gears because I okay now 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 let's just be realistic in his perfect world. And this is no disrespect to the brother, but let's just say you go out and you go ahead and make money, right? But the woman is at home cooking. She's cleaning. She's teaching the children. She's actually running the household, but you're going to call yourself the head because you bring home a check. Like the work she's doing is not equivalent to the same physical and emotional investment that you put. No, there is no head. Together, you guys are the head. So when right. they talk about the household, and like, yo, dismiss me with that. I'm going to need you to, no, just, just, I ain't trying to be rude, but dismiss me with that. There's no way that you could call yourself the head when the woman puts in just as much work, if not a little bit more, because she's with the children, she's nurturing the children, she's educating the children, she's and she's taking care of your behind too, nurturing you, making sure your physical and emotional needs are, are, are met. Uh, so just because you go to work and bring home a check and you may cut the lawn and take out the trash and you know you got a deeper voice does not make you the head, honey. So but yeah, I mean, I would just like to know. I would just like to know what what the, what was the meaning in her place? Because I right. mean, you said her place. Because check this out, you know. And I'm just about to get real grimy with him right quick. So here's the thing. The thing about it is this, you know. Um, how about you know? I'm with my husband for years and years, right? And I'm dealing with all of his uh, addictions. Let's say he's an alcoholic. Let's just say that, right? Okay, so he's the head of the household. He's going to work. He's a functioning alcoholic. He's paying all the bills, right? So I'm, you know, I'm dealing with all the stress and all the trauma, all his multiple problems and all of this kind of stuff. But I got to keep my place because he's an alcoholic. So I was just supposed to sit back and just accept all of the abuses just because of the fact that he's the head. So if I'm supposed... I believe that that's supposed to be, there's supposed to be a mutual respect. That's number one. Because guess what? If I let him lead me anywhere and he's an alcoholic, where do you think he's leading me? He's going to lead me straight to the liquor store. Okay. And I ain't going there. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And we both, and we both hurting and the blind can't lead the blind and we in right. this together. So the head is us together. It ain't no man is the head. It ain't no woman is the head. Because again, masculine and fit, masculine energy cannot exist without feminine and vice versa. And like <laughs> Dr. Wayama, I said, bringing that together is one. So we can go on and shut that conversation she down. She called it duality. She called it duality. Duality, harmonious, harmonious, du harmonious right. duality. Right. right. Harmonious duality. So we're talking about complementarity. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I still got love with you, though, brother. Just, you know, okay. Oh yeah, definitely. But we, you know, it's kind of like I used to get offended yeah. when I heard brothers talk like that until I realized, as Dr. Amos Wilson says, that we see the world through European lenses. We yeah. do. We've been colonized, yeah. enslaved, and educated by the European and, and inundated and indoctrinated with 
um, their, their religious philosophies. So you take all of that and you put that into psychology of black men and black women. We think and we behave and we treat each other as Europeans. So I used to get offended when brothers would talk like that, but now I kind of identify the mentality. I'm like, okay, try it. You must be a brother, his background, and you just simply see the world through European lenses. Like you said, Sister Razi, no disrespect, you know, to the brother or the sister, but you know, they're in a certain place in their journey, and, and we are in a certain place in our journey. So I don't get offended with with ignorance, right? <laughs> because I just understand that all of us are in different places, you know, in in our journey, you know, to consciousness. Because so that's what so anyway. With that being said, um. So we touched on that. I wanna um I wanna talk on the last aspect of black power. So remember we were saying in order to have black power, you had to be in control of your social, uh, economic, and political aspects of your community. So we touched on the economic aspect, we 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 touched on uh, the social aspect. Um now let's get into the politics of our community. Are black people really ready to to implement a political uh, a paradigm to govern our communities? Like, are we really ready to set our own laws, to um, create our own process, to elect our own leaders? I mean, are we really ready for that? So we say, you know, we want sovereignty. We say we want, we say we want our own communities, but we got to think in order to have our own nation, we have to be in control of our politics you know, of our of our economics. So are we really ready? You have black people that don't even want to police their own community. Now, shout out to the brothers of uh, New Era Detroit. Uh, yes. What is it We're called? Right. New Era Atlanta, New Era uh, Chicago, and I believe they just started a New Era Baltimore. So I appreciate those brothers and sisters who are out there, boots on the ground, policing our community. But, yes. you know, you know, but, you know, but we need more. We need, uh, we need all of us to, to police the community. So are black people really ready? You know, we, we talk about the beast, you know, right. and we the beast in our communities, but then when we get into a beef with our, with our husbands or our daughters or, you know, or the wives or whatever, the first person people are calling is the beast. You know, yeah. so are we really ready to, 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 to create and enforce our own laws, to create a process, to elect our own leaders? I mean, look at the quote unquote unquote conscious community and the leaders that they are following, the people that they are following. So am I to believe that we actually, that we have the capability to elect a leader in our community? Look at who people are following, and I'm not gonna name call Sister Razik, I wanna name call so bad. <laughs> to know who to follow in, in terms of research, in terms of doctrine, we don't have a clue. So right. and we're not even studying our own local laws. We, you know, like, like we're not even into our own local politics. And you know, my, my stint with you know learning more science and learning the fact that a lot of us who are labeled legally as black literally have no standing in law. Like many of us aren't even able to grasp that concept that the term black and white is a status legally and lawfully uh and, and and the reason why jews irish people uh germans whatever came under um under the umbrella of the status white is so that they are able to accomplish certain things and that status that you call white is actually uh having a higher standing in law versus being under the status of black i forgot the brother's name but he came from egypt right and he's just as dark as me but when he got here they were like, yeah, you need to classify yourself as white because this system is, is, is a business. It's a corporation. It's commerce. And, and people, and, and we are the commodity here. And so when you understand that people have been systematically labeled so that they fall under a certain category and status and in law, that, that's our first problem. That, that we, we're not even conscious of what the 13th Amendment really was. We're not even conscious that the declar the pro declaration, proclamation, whatever, is just a damn declaration. And declaring just simply means to state to the public. It doesn't mean it's a law. So, so we are under a sorcery and under an 
ignorance that we we really think that America and the United States of America and U.S. is the same thing when these are three different corporations. Like until we can understand how what we know today in the United States of America, how it operate, how it's a business, how under OCGA 1-2-1 in Georgia, you're considered a corporation and not a natural person, we got a long way to go. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And I actually concur with you on that, Sister Riziki. I had a, a mentor. Her name is Dr. Cynthia um, Morton. She was a professor over at Cotton State University for about 40 years. She just recently retired. And she was telling me that during the 60s and 70s, she went over to Africa about five times. And she said when she traveled to Africa, they told her she had to travel under the status of a white woman. So yeah. at the time, her information, I mean, I guess the passport or whatever her past was, it had her, and then it's her status was a white woman. And she, wow. when she realized that, you know, saying white, saying black is simply a status. status. It's, not, it's not an ethnicity. Look at the laws. It will show you that the people who originated from Northeastern Africa have a right to say I'm white. The indigenous people here on this land is it, all, you know, and I'll put my business out there, but I have went to jail and seen immigrants get better treatment than me because it's a status. It's a status. And again, we are not conscious of these things. Like a family. And you know, this is why the Reconstruction era, why they took away all these books, the reason why certain people talk about that scene in Birth of a Nation where they was telling that little boy, this is for, you know, this ain't for you because black folks don't understand. Like, this is what they were doing this whole time. Straight up, taking away our culture, taking away our status, taking away our nationality, and putting us under a label. If you line up four generations right now, your birth certificate may say black, mine may say African American, somebody else may say colored, somebody else may say mulatto. Negro, Negro yeah, yeah. There you yep. go. This mm -hmm. is a systematic business move to separate people so that you can keep calling us a, a minority. This is going back to, again, the conditioning. But again, Black people, until we understand the laws that are creating the sorcery that we are under, no, we ain't ready for no political change because we not we not even showing up at our local elections. We well, ready to put dollars behind our local, you know, representation. That's mm -hmm. right. Being black uh, in America seems as if it's a target for white supremacy. But that's how they set it up. When stop, you stop. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sis. No, 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 not you, sweetie. I was talking to my daughter. Go ahead, say that again. <laughs> say that again. I was saying, when you understand that Europeans, can, first off, before this was the United States of America, this was a quote unquote Islamic based country. There were still other cultures, there were still other religions here, but you know, the government was set up different, okay? When Europeans came over here fleeing from all the sickness, disease, and murder and stuff that was going on where they was coming from, they came over here with the understanding like, look, we're here to create businesses. That This is why when they came here, excuse my expression, they ain't no shit. They had to use our labor and steal all of our ideas and learn how to grow food and had us in their basements coming up with cures. But then, like you said, we're the father of this. We're the father of that. So mm -hmm. they literally used our energy, our current as currency. Our labor backs their dollar. We are using a Federal Reserve note that we really think is backed by a resource. It's a piece of damn paper. We, we do not understand that real money, real resources is under the ground. Real money, real resources is in our labor, not this piece of paper that just creates debt. And, and, and black, us as black people, we lack this knowledge in financial, financial competency as well as legal competency. And those two go hand in hand. Our banks are ran by private families. Like, don't nobody, this, this ain't clicking to nobody? Private <laughs> families. No doubt, sis. Ooh, I can go on. I'm, I'm going to be quiet now. Let me put my mic on me. No, oh. no, you ain't got to put it on me, sis. I enjoy hearing you, Bill. I just, I just wanted to add this, though, that, um, I mean, you're right. We, you know, <laughs> sister, I'm just going to put my stuff on mute. I'm just, I'm just saying, because this it, it, the rabbit hole so deep, and it's like, yeah. It, it goes like, 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 and, and, and people, like, I don't try to get people on school 
patriotism, but you got to understand the same reason why these people stole our ancient traditions and religions, but will go behind closed doors and pray to our Orishas, will pray to our Black Madonnas, will pray to our deity. It is a sorcery that these mofos switch the calendar. How you going to switch time? You, you, we ain't even operating on the right circadian rhythm. It goes deeper than just, at, uh, well, of course, education, because education, but it goes deeper than finding. It's about, because we are a water culture, and you, like, all black people all over the world, the one thing we good at is religion, singing, marching, praising, dancing, baptizing, <laughs> singing, art, all that. Stuff. And they have brainwashed us through all of these things. Mm-hmm. And, brainwashed us through all of the things that we are good at. They have taken away the things that have established our, our civilization and used it for their benefit. And it's mm-hmm. like, we, but, but we are okay with not adopting back our ancient traditions when those are the things that freed us in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. The original everything, pot, like the, 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 the knowledge that we were given okay, contain all of the sciences that it took to maintain and sustain a civilization. But because, you know, I mean, whatever happened, we, we you know, science is for white folks, math is for white folks, being wow. corporate, being uh, good at customer service, talking like you actually read a dictionary is considered white. That's a problem. That's another thing that, you know, it, it really plays our community is That's that true. we can't Certain, certain um, success or certain ways of speaking or thinking is European. We, we, yeah, we Dr. 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 cut y'all off, but my phone is at is at one percent. Doctor Maadi just okay. dropped me off. So this, so this is what we're going to do because um, I said I didn't want to go any longer than about an hour, hour and a half. I believe we've been on probably a little over an hour. What, what does your phone say, Sister Raziki? Uh, we've been on. Oh yeah, let, let me check the live thing. I, I, that I was think good. So hey, just the Riziki. That was that you went in just now, sis. You heard me. I missed that little other part, but you know you you know you doing that right. you done that you're on fire you tonight. You <laughs> no, my, my chest over here burning. Oh, y'all don't understand. <laughs> and sister Jamil, sister Jamil, you great, sister. You know I love it. You know I love the spirit. Love yours back. So, yeah. sister, so, sister Kyle, but since your um, since your uh, phone is getting ready to go out, we're all going to close out one by one. I want yeah. you to close this out first, and I want each woman to talk about what she has going on. So, I want Sister um, Jamila to definitely talk about your school. Sister uh, Raziki, talk about your healing program, your agricultural program. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, sister, I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go first since my phone is on one percent, but. Uh, family, you know, we got to come together. Like right now, I, I was telling, you know, a couple of close friends about how I have five acres, five acres of land here where I live and, you know, having such a hard time trying to get it um, cleared off and cultivated the funding. You know, it, it's like it's a project for me right now. Right. And so I'm, I'm really into it because I want to start a community garden because I think it's important to me. It's important to my daughter. It's important to some of the other ladies who have come aboard and want to teach their children at home. You know what I'm saying? Because we already have, like the sister Jamil was saying, we're dealing with these standardized testings and things like that, but we don't want to have to have our children being instructed on how to act every day, if they should sing, if they should feel joy, if they should express great things. So that whole unit of being African-centered and teaching our children in African traditions, in traditional culture is important to me. You know, so I got, I have that situation going on and I, and I won't stop until, until I finish, you, you know what I'm saying? And I, I want to be not just a community, because I feel like I'm big in the community. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm a community activist in a lot of different ways because I engage myself in a lot of different things that happen in the community. You know what I'm saying? In the community, and I, I was listening to the brother, uh, Netanyahu, about the Baltimore, who has uh, owned the Parnetta Research Institute. The brother's brilliant when it comes down to dealing with African tradition, and he said something that was very important to me. He said that African culture was rooted in community, and I mean, how could I, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, 
yes. You know, when you think about it and you look at all of our African uh, centered uh, uh, traditions, we always see our Nasuts or we see our queens. They're always in their community doing things. Everything that we would see them, it was in their community. There, were, there was a people around them that was helping to do different things. So the culture was rooted deeply in what is happening in the community. So it's very important that we incorporate community when we talking about uh, defense, when we're talking about economics, when we're talking about uh, uh, African-centered education, when we're talking about holistic health, it's important that we include the community and what we are key at doing in the community to raise it up. Um, I also want people to know that um, I'm kind of a contractor uh, as far as we're tutoring. You know, I kind of help people write essays, uh, do PowerPoint presentation. I kind of charge a fee for that because, you know, it kind of helps me, but that's what I do. So people can really reach me on Facebook, um, Kaba Nepti on, uh, on Facebook, you know, for anything like that. Cause I don't have this big establishment going on. I, I really, I only wish to get where sister Jamil is with having that homeschool at home. I, I need, you know, as far as with everything African around me, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're at home, but I'm saying everything African, you know, like I can focus on every single thing and, and it's just sad that in my life right now, there's so many different variables that uh, take away from me just fully just going into that full flesh. But that's a definitely a plan. So my honors go out to you, uh, sister. My honors go out to Sister Dr. Ma for everything she's done in the community with Meltrack. We need the people to support black business, support Meltrack. Our children are destined to learn things about themselves and their history. And then you are even destined to learn things about yourself, your okay. history, and your culture. And we want to appreciate Sister Riziki with her holistic health, with her spiritual, I mean, you know, everything that these sisters are doing is put in place to actually create a situation where that we can nation build. We have to start nation building. We have to start black economics. It, it is important that we help one another. It is important that we shoot out donations to, to schools like uh, Sister Jamil's African Center School. We need to keep this thing going. And uh, I mean, if we're not going to uh, keep this thing going, to, you know, sitting back and arguing over face. We don't care about that. We really want to do something in the community. We want to do something for the community. We need protection from the community. And so in order for us to do that, we need to come together collectively as a community, an African community. So with that, I'll say peace and love to everyone and black power, because that's the only way we really have true black power. I say. I say, family. Absolutely. I'm going to hold on until the phone hang up, my sisters, but I'm the 1%. All right, go ahead, Jim. Y'all go in. I'm listening. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sister. Go ahead, sister Jamila. Okay, uh, so here's where I am. Asase Academy is a different kind of school for an awakening generation. The, the whole purpose of the African Center Education is that our children will get the head start that we keep talking of, we keep speaking of. So I put myself in a position, again, it's never been about my children. I, I taught my children while we ate breakfast, you know, so it's about other people's children, making sure that the community gets what it needs. Our children were taught to grow their own food. They grew their own food. Part of that was also economics, selling the food and keeping the profits so that we can support Black-owned banks by opening the account. So we need the family we need the community. We need those who are in Memphis to come out. When the children have events where they're selling their produce, come buy a green pepper. Come buy a couple of tomatoes. You're not only helping the children, you're helping the school. You're teaching them a valuable lesson that if you grow it, we will buy it. If you build it, we will support it. You know, so um, we had an ice cream social. We invited the families and community to come out to the ice cream social. We got all kind of stuff. Um, you know, dairy is not good for you. Okay, well, we got vegan ice cream. Well, you should use soy milk. Soy has this and that. If y'all don't come out here, if you don't eat ice cream, send somebody out here who does eat ice cream. We have too many excuses for why we won't support our people. So if you don't eat ice cream and the children are having an ice cream social, then you send somebody out here who eats dairy. It's not a reason to not support them because it's not something you personally engage in. So we had a Black Panther breakfast. We jumped, start our Black Panther curriculum with a free breakfast program for the community. They don't know that the school system got its black uh, free breakfast program from the Black Panthers. Let's pay homage and respect to where that came from. So we have three programs, the after school detox program for parents who have chosen one way or another or given a reason for why their children can't have after center education, no problem. We got a public school detox 
Rewards program. And for five bucks a day, less than $2.50 an hour, your child can come here at Asase Academy and you can, they can get detox. I give all kind of free videos out online, free advice, free information, educational consultations, everything. I'm available. What we have now going on is holla what? It's replacing Halloween where our children are going to, it's called Yoruba Night, excuse me, are paying homage, <clears throat> paying honor to our aunts, to the Orishas. Okay. So Sunday, Sunday, October 30th at Empower Memphis, 1289 North Bellevue, we got a whole night of festivities from 4 to 7 p.m. We got dancing, we got culture, the children going to learn about the Orishas. We still going to pass out a little candy because that's what our children need. They can dress up in costumes like their ancestors, that's still what they need as well. But they're going to learn about the Orishas this year. They're going to learn about those manifestations of God. They're going to know something more than when they left so that they can say, oh, here's what we learned. We have to stop just kicking and family. We don't have time to play and have a good time and just be entertained. Our people are dying. Our children are dying. We are losing out in this last place. My brother keep on speaking though because when we have opportunities to support, we don't want to do that. So we want to see everybody in the Memphis area October 30th Sunday at the Hall of what? Um, it's $10 a person. Where does that money go? It goes to fund programs. Our children want to go to Ida B. Wells Museum in Holly Springs, Mississippi. We read about her. I didn't know there was a museum. Our children found that. They want to go to Africa. They want to see these pyramids at Giza. They want to see if it's really 48 stories tall. They want to see the things that I teach them about. So it's up to us to make sure we make that happen. We have a whole bunch of events coming up next month as well. So everybody can visit my website, asaseacademy.com little shameless pull up there and um, check out everything that's going on. And starting January 2nd, I got a Sase Virtual Academy. I don't care where you are. You can subscribe to monthly memberships. Your child can be involved in the public school detox program live from wherever you are. The homeschool program live from wherever you are. Videos, lessons, math, science, astronomy, numerology, tests, quizzes, homework, everything like an actual school online. So we don't have to sit here. Since I wish you were over here in, in Atlanta, since I wish you were in DC, since I wish you don't have to wish, you have to support. January 2nd, Asase Virtual Academy will be available. So those of you all who want your children to experience this African-centered education are taking away the fact that the distance was a factor. It is no longer a factor. Fam, I love you all who do support. I love you all who don't support because you're going to come around and make sure you're going to make this happen. So again, Jamila, um, Asase Academy, you can find me online and you can find me in person, especially this next Sunday at the uh, Holla What's event that we have for families. Hey, sis, let me ask you a question. There's a brother um, in the chat room. And shout out to the brothers and sisters that joined us in the chat room. There are a lot of brothers. You got Brother Nahisi from the Masi clan. I see uh, New Black World Order. Uh, sister, uh, sister, brother, Sean P. He's in the building. There's another brother by the name of Sunline 55. So I want to shout out to the brothers and, and sisters who joined us um, today. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and this, the brother asked, Sunline said, can he donate on your website? So on your website, is there a place where he can donate? To the school? Absolutely. On the uh, second page that has all the programs on there, there's also a PayPal link. And that PayPal link will send all the donations straight to the school. So I'm glad you asked. Thank you, brother. So that's the Sase Academy, A S A S E Academy.com. And on that second page, there's a link to PayPal. If you don't feel comfortable with the PayPal, you got a couple extra pencils, we'll take them. Dry erase boards and markers, we'll take them. Toilet paper, ink cartridges, number 65, we'll take them. You know, you got some books at home you're not reading anymore, send them on to the school. 480 Jensen Road, that's in Memphis, 38109. I appreciate everything our children do. Definitely, definitely. And I love the fact that, you know, I tell people all the time, don't support us with your mouth, support us with your resources. Right. right. I love the fact that the brother Sun Lion said, well, look, you know, I like her idea. You know, how can I help this sister out? You know, and anything counts. One dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. It does. Like it you does. Said, pencils, you know, erasers, you know, anything counts. So, um, Absolutely. brother Sun Lion, um, I appreciate you, brother, for, you know, sending, you know, your, your hand, because that's what you're ultimately doing. I also want to thank um, brother Sean P. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, brother Sean P. But this is a brother who also supports not only with his mouth, but with his resources. He is a man of action. And I appreciate that, that quality 
uh, uh, about you, um, Brother Sean P. So go ahead, brother, and um, go ahead, Sister Raziki. I want you to go ahead and explain, you know, your program, what you got going, who you are, where people can find you. Absolutely. Well, again, family, this is your sister, Raziki Zafira. Um, first and foremost, I do read star charts. Again, my goal is to help align people with their purpose while they're here. Um, and as far as the agricultural piece, I kind of just made a vow not to set foot on a, a farm unless it's black owned and operated. Um, there has been many farms I set foot on and it got taken away because it was not owned by our own. So I just kind of got, you know, discouraged as far as wasting my energy that way. But um, if anyone wants to uh, reach me, uh, my website, www.rizikizafi.com. Um, not only do I uh, give consultations, but I also teach classes about this science that our ancestors use, not just to uh, understand the patterns of nature, but also to understand the pattern of self, knowing thyself. Um, you can reach me on my Facebook page, Raziki L. And um, all of these sisters that was on this panel tonight, I definitely want you all to support. Again, I support heavily Dr. Oya Ma'at. I purchase her mail check products. I, am, I encourage everyone out there, if you have children or don't, you got nieces, nephews, Please support this this animation because we do need more media and more mental imprints in our children that could set subconscious, you know, uh, uh, motivation and inspiration in a positive manner. Uh, Sister uh, Asase, I probably butchered that name, Asasa Academy. Okay, you said it correct. <laughs> I'm telling y'all to go ahead. Y'all know I shared her video with the little vaccinations and stuff like that. I'm gonna need y'all to go on and support. You know, a lot of comments are here, like, well, how do we this? How do we that? We are letting you know right now. So please support Sister Kaba. Uh, definitely, you know, supporting the children. And you know, I, I, I'm all for children, but you know, I like working with you know, these young, the, the, this young blood, the, the teens to the early adults and even people my age, you know, uh, uh, we, we got to set the tone and we got to set the foundation for the younger generation. And we have the energy, we have the mindset, we have the talent, we have the skill. So I encourage everybody out there to know your skill, know your purpose and do your role in society. It is needed. Connect with your tribe, vibe with your tribe, build something, produce something, and stop consuming. As that's you. right. I say. That's all I got I to say. say. I Peace, say. sisters. Peace to y'all. Thank you so I much, say. Dr. Oyama, for putting this together. I'm so honored yes. to be here. Yes. Hold on, sister. Look, y'all getting ready to run. I want to do my little clothes out. Hold on. Yes, that's right. Oh, yes. I just got back on. I'm sorry, sister. Roll. Let me to run. Let me do my little clothes out. <laughs> So, this. so family, 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 support Meltrek. Again, you know, Meltrek is a project um, that was created with children. Wait, hold on. Jamila, can you mute your mic? Because it's a lot of wind. And it's breaking up. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's a lot of wind. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, okay. let me see. Is it muted? Yeah. Let me be still. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, yeah, please support Meltrek, the Meltrek project. Uh, which was created to teach children um, an accurate account of, of African and African-American history. And you might ask yourself, well, God, the Oya Maya, why is it important to teach children an accurate account of history? Well, it's important to teach children, to teach children an accurate account of history because history shapes your worldview. It shapes your worldview. And your worldview encompasses your self-perception, how you allow other people to teach you, and how you treat other people. And so a lot of the issues that we have as a people is because we simply have a distorted world view. So with that said, please support Meltrek. Uh, we have two episodes. Well, one episode is available right now, and I know I'm sharing my screen. So you have the Meltrek DVD, episode one, Exploring Ancient Africa. And the objective of this episode um, was to teach children that their history does not start with enslavement. So we talk Absolutely. about the different kingdoms in Africa. We talk about melanin. We showed them pictures of the great uh, rulers, you know, the kings and queens of Africa. We talk about the natural resources of Africa. So basically we're teaching children um, about pre-diaspora Africa or pre-colonization Africa in Meltrek episode one. And each episode comes with, well, this episode currently has a, a coloring book, a coloring and activity book 
to accompany it. And you say, Dr. Mayat, well, why do you have a color and activity book? Well, there's a lot of information um, disseminated in the film, and we wanted um, a tool that would inculcate the information inside the psyche of the children. So we want the children to remember the Meltrek experience, to remember the information that was disseminated in Meltrek. So we have a coloring and activity book that also uh, reinforces the information that we provide for them in the film. Uh, we have an autograph poster that comes with it. Um, you can also, if you come to our website and you, you join it and you register, you'll be able to access unit plans that we have available. So I don't know if you can see this, but it says to access the unit plans, the special offers is for members is for members only. So if you become a member, which is only $25 a year, so if you become a member, then you'll be able to access actual unit plans for uh, your child. And these unit plans consist of a student learning packet, uh, lesson plans, and quizzes. So you can assess where your child is with the information. So we have that. Um, let me go back to this page. If you go down, you see that we have the Mel Trek Episode 2 DVD available for pre-order. If you go to YouTube, but you don't even have to go to YouTube. Look at this. You can click on Mel Trek Video Channel. All of this is on the Ed Anime Productions website. But you can come to the Mel Trek uh, Video Channel and watch the actual trailer for uh, Mel Trek episode two, exploring the pre-Columbian the pre-Columbian Americas, and so in this particular um, episode, children will learn that Columbus didn't discover America, and he'll, they'll they'll be able to name. By the time they finish watching this episode, they'll understand that Columbus didn't discover America, and that they'll be able to name and describe the indigenous cultures of the America, and they will be informed of the African presence in the Americas prior to Christopher Columbus. Okay, so I believe that every child should have Mel Trek in their collection. Um, we currently have DVDs. We also have a digital download because I know the DVDs are getting phased out. But we do have a digital download that's available. You can either come to our website to download the film or you can uh, visit Amazon.com to, uh, to, um, to, to download the film. Please donate. We always are in need of donations. On the website, let me scroll down. On the website, we have a place where you can uh, donate right here. You can donate. Uh, if I scroll up, you can uh, join our email listing if you want to be informed or if you want to be kept abreast of the different projects we have coming up. Um, if and we also have a um, a a, a, a co -op, I'm sorry, cooperative economic program. So if you want to, you know, let's say that you have an e-store online and you would like to sell Mel Trek products, you come here, you sign up as an affiliate. And I'm we'll sorry, give you, <laughs> yep, you come, you sign up as an affiliate, and we'll give you 20% commission, which is great because on average, you know, affiliate programs only pay about 5 to 20%. If you become an affiliate of Ed Anime Productions, we're going to give you 20% of the commission. Um, if you want to wholesale Mel Trek. All you got to do is come to edanimeproductions.com, click on the wholesale program, a PDF will pop up and it will show you how you can wholesale it. If you want to raise money for your organization, so look at this, we have a wholesale program, we have an affiliate program, we have fundraising programs. So if you want to raise money for your organization, you can come right here to Ed Anime Productions and we'll help you do that. All right, so with that said, family, please buy black Think black and I say buy black, think black, and bank black. Um, I have nothing else to say, ladies. You did an exceptional job. Um, I appreciate everyone yes. today. Jamila, thank you so much. Sister Raziki, thank you so much. Sister Kaba, her phone dropped out, but thank you so much. It was an honor to have all of you um, on the uh, panel today. Um, a lot of you, you're movers and shakers in the community, your movers and shakers. Sister Jamila, you have a school. Sister Raziki, you have a healing program and an agricultural program, you know. And, and Sister Kaba, I know she's a part of different institutions that has a lot going on herself. So I just, you know, we had a very, very powerful, a panel of powerful African women. And so I thank you for giving me your time, for giving the audience your time. Peace and Black African power.